projects in secrecy because they don't want anyone to have the information before they publish it. And he did something completely different. He, he put a, a, a blog up for everyone to contribute. And he asked everyone around, what information do you have? And whatever he found himself, he also put it out there. And then in the end, it gave this fantastic book that came out just in time for the 100th anniversary of the first uh, Quebec City Stanley Cup win. Marc Durand. Merci, merci, merci. Ok, I'll try my best English for everybody, since my book's in French, as it were. So, one, two, should go back. Hit the new CBC. There's a joke in there, but I'm going to Joke? <laughs> oh, yeah. That's great. So I was saying that my, well, thank you very much for everybody to buy my book today and uh, uh, last year, from last year, but uh, since it's in French, I will try to explain it to you in English. So uh, the book here is uh, started well uh, uh, when I had the five W's in my head for a lot of time. Uh, where uh, did they play? Who was Joe Malone exactly? How did they play hockey in those days? So it was always a question and I, I find it hard to have the answer, so that's why I joined the SIHR, that's why I started my blog and some people wrote me and said, ah, my grandfather played for the team and it wasn't right, but uh, it's not, <laughs> it's okay, it's a part of the process and everything and then there's a real grandfather who played and they had some pictures and uh, at least I, I talked about 15 uh, uh, families who have played uh, in the uh, Quebec hockey team uh, organization for the 40 years that they existed. So, two computers, I'll try to do my best. So, it's, like I told you, it's for, for, um, 40 years of hockey in Quebec, uh, since 1878 till 1920. So we're gonna talk about the Quebec Hockey Club. So they had the great stories. Uh, the, the players are uh, England's sons, a wealthy young men from Quebec City, losing every year the power, uh, their power in the French majority. Those who stayed were really proud, and the newspaper were uh, fans about them, even the French one when they came in. So uh, they were popular since the beginning, and uh, hockey was alive uh, from the beginning also. In fact, the first covered rink, su supposedly, the first covered rink ever was in Quebec City in 1851. And the Quebec Skating Club was also born the same year. In fact, they uh, um, uh, um, built this rink. And uh, so uh, the, the Quebec Skating Club existed for that on. So they love to play games in Quebec City also because some, uh, some research tells us that they played uh, early in 1825. I'm working on this. I have some clues. And, uh, but the, the secret loss. Uh, said to the kids, you cannot play Hurley in the streets in 1845, it's in the book. So Hurley was uh, really a, a big game in those days, in the streets and uh, also skating. So why not join both of them? Uh, the, that, that was the first skating rink. The second skating rink was here, uh, built in 1864, uh, uh, just in front of the parliament. Well, the parliament was born, uh, built in 18. 1880, so it was there before, and they uh, ripped it off in 1885 because it was, wasn't used anymore, it was only for the con uh, constructor, so uh, they put things in there, so they turned it down, and the skating club wanted another uh, skating rink, so they built this one, this is the first place that they played the hockey, it was built in 1877, it cost $32,000, it was uh, 180 feet by 75, and they built it exactly the same year that they started the parliament. And the parliament guys were really happy because what is that in front of, in front of the parliament? They didn't love it. And uh, well, the Granadi Street still lives. The Pot Saint Louis uh, gates, Saint Louis gates, uh, was uh, erected this way also the same year. So it was um, brand new, but it wasn't popular for the provincial. Um, uh, government, so they, they wanted it to be uh, put uh, somewhere else, but it held about 10 years. So uh, the, the rig was for the wealthy uh, people who uh, skate uh, with Carnival and Mardi Gras and everything. You know that the first O Canada 
uh, the first performance was there in 1880 for the Saint Jean Baptiste um, uh, ceremony, so June 24th. Okada was played there for the first time. And this is a drawing from 1878. And among these people must have been some of those guys. And accordingly to uh, Bill Fitzel, that's what you told me on email when I sent you this picture. It was a real surprise for me. It's not in the book. This one is not in the book because it came too late. But some pictures of the players up there are in the book. Um, it can be, I'm, I just want to be sure it's not, uh, I don't know if anybody, but Bill told me maybe it's the first studio pictures of a sport team ever. 1878, so in, uh, in uh, the football club. And this is interesting because the guy who had that who had a, an antique shop and uh, he didn't want to sell it. So I, I asked every antique shop in Quebec and I have uh, the picture, do I have a picture? So I, maybe I have something for you and he bring it his home. And I, when I saw that, I was, wow. Because there's a lot of the hockey players I had the name that are also the Quebec Football Club's members. And this guy here, Charles Miller, just here, is the George Creighton of Quebec City. He's the one who brought hockey to uh, inside ring in 1878. So at least I have one picture. And <laughs> when I found this one, I was like, wow, this is incredible. Harcourt Smith here, the first guy who scored a goal against Montreal in 1881 for the first game between two cities and inside ring. Uh, this is also Bill Fitzel who gave me that. It was really uh, pleasant to, to have a letter from Arthur e. Scott, one of the players of the Quebec, who was uh, writing to uh, Mr. Finlay. He was a player, I think, for Shamrocks, or no, no not Shamrocks, the Victoria, I think, and also a president of the league. And he was talking about him, like an answer of, of a letter before he received about the time that the club was born in 1878. Or 39, and the, the name of the players there, and even thinking that <coughs> hockey has a birth in Quebec City. So <laughs> now Quebec has the same. No, it's like uh, the, everybody was thinking that hockey was born in their city, and he tells that we can go back in the early 70s. So it's interesting to yeah. see that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, so the first. Uh, uh, word hockey I found in the Quebec uh, newspaper was in 1879. So a hockey match is played. The first time I saw the Quebec Hockey Club was in uh, 1880 for a game of lacrosse. There was a lot of uh, those games in those times and the players there are almost all the same as plays in the, the football photo. The first ever game between Montreal and Quebec, it wasn't Quebec, 1881. They tried in 1880 to have a game, but uh, they disputed the rules, so the game wasn't played against the Victoria Club. So the first ever game was in Quebec, Quebec won 2-0 on this uh, particular day. And they took a picture of the Victoria of Montreal, taken in Quebec in 1881. So it might be the first hockey team picture ever, even if they are not with their gloves and skates and everything. The first uh, picture of uh, the Quebec Hockey Club or team uh, found was in 1888. And it's curious because it's the only picture that I have without the stripes, blue and white stripes. So it's the uh, St. George Cross. But the players are there. It's the really it's the, And I had two photos, one from Bill, another one from uh, Mr. Bignell. Uh, I saw Mr. Bignell, well, the grand grandson. <coughs> and he gave the picture, the frame, to uh, a national society in uh, Quebec, so it will be preserved. I should have asked him before he wants to tell it. That's my fault. Um, well, the games go on, go on, go on fast. They play against Halifax, the famous game where the goals were uh, in the other side of the, the reef. That's what's crazy, it was the Halifax uh, rules. And then it was the last game at, at the old ring. They, switched the ring to the other side of Bernadette, and this one was uh, raised two years later. So for two years, there were no inside hockey in Quebec City. That, that thing I proved to the uh, Abrams and the uh, Pope's feel, I don't know the word in English, but uh, people always write that they, they switch it immediately, but it takes two years to build a ring, so there was no inside hockey uh, in Quebec for two years. It was built in 1891, and it was burned in 1918. 
that's where they won the Stanley Cup. So the team go back, there's the strikes, there's a Quebec flag with the, everything on it, and uh, Sir David Watson, Sir David Watson, that served in the World War I, was the player here. And he is playing for about 10 years in this, uh, this club. He's really important. And he, uh, according to Bill, again, he is the only sir in hockey history. Well, uh, with, with, uh, being sir. Um, this picture is, uh, I found a date. It's in 1894. Everybody knows this picture because it's really re reprinted everywhere. Uh, January 21, I kind of remember it in my book. And it was taken for the carnival for a special of the Daily Telegraph that was organized, uh, organizing the first uh, winter carnival for Quebec City. So it's it's funny to see how they put the how do we say that mise en jeu face off. I know this one. So face off is like the other side, the post with like a, a curling rock. I don't know, no fence uh, spectators who do the fence. You can imagine when there's a hit. Uh, the, the players uh, go to the uh, spectators and the spectators knock, knock him down. So it's <laughs> kind of happening. So uh, that was the Quebec skating ring from the inside. Matt. Yep. So that's the building we saw a few slides ago that yes. burned in 1918? The one that burned in 1918? That's it, yeah, sorry, yeah. And, and in fact, it's the same that was built in front of the parliament. They just turn it down, switch it bar. So the, only the front has changed. I think I get too, too fast, but it's okay. Um, what was the slide before? Okay, uh, this is the team of 1884. I just want to uh, spot this guy here, Arthur Edward Swift. He gave me a lot of trouble because he is a great. He has a great story, but I don't know <coughs> where and when he died. It's really hard to find. But what you have to know about this guy? He's the Gordy Owl of the 19th century. He's the guy who scored the most goal in. Uh, a real game situation with the two teams, senior, 57 goals. So he's the one who scored the more goals in the 19th century, and Gordia Howe is the one in the 20th century. And the other one is Frank Stocking, a really important player. Uh, he tells everybody, till the end of his year, that he invented hockey nets. And I had a, a great discussion with Paul Kitchen about this one because Paul says that the net that Frank Stocking proposed was really different than the net we have today. It was supposed to be in the board. That's what the, the plan of Stocking was to be like that, in the board, with the, an inclined board. Uh, it wouldn't work, I think. <laughs> but, people did. but he was the one who proposed the nets for like two years before it was um, installed in 1900. So Frank Stocking might deserve some uh, some uh, greatness about this. All right. Um, in those years, rapidly, like we've passed the first 20 years, it, it only left now 20 more years. The, the best team in Quebec City wasn't the Quebec Hockey Club. It was the Crescents. They were in the intermediate uh, league, CAHL. And they had great, really great players, mostly Irish players against the Quebec Hockey Club, mostly Anglophones, uh, England. So, Percy Desoir was a forward. Uh, Patty Moran was in goal. Um, uh, Herb Jordan, a great player who played for Renfrew after that, was there. Uh, Rocket Power, must have known the Power family. Rocket played for the Canadian. Uh, Eddie Gardeau, maybe the, the best French Canadian who played for the Quebec Hockey Club. Uh, so, they had a great team, and this guy, the young guy, is uh, M.G. Quinn, who is the builder of the Quebec Hockey Club that won the Stanley Cup. So they were great. They asked to be in the senior league, and the senior league said, well, two teams in Quebec might be hard. So they said, OK, we won't go. And all those players played at least one game for the Quebec Hockey Club afterward. The first one was Patty Moran the year after. Uh, so they did great. All, all these players, Rocket Power was there, Patty Moran. Ma, C, Hogan, Jordan, they claim to be the world champion of 1904. This is the one Stanley Cup that should be for the Quebec uh, uh, hockey team because they finished first in the league, but Ottawa quit the league in 1904 and kept the Stanley Cup with them, and then Quebec didn't have the chance to, uh, to get the cup, so the, the trustees gave it to the Ottawa Senators, 
there's a lot of battle about it, but they had a great team and they played New York for this photo against the amateurs from New York. Um, they kept on and on and on. It wasn't easy for Quebec because they all played amateurs, some getting professional, and the question in Quebec until 1910 is, do we stay in professional hockey? Because it's, come, it's, uh, it's was going uh, farther and farther to get uh, for uh, professional hockey. So Quebec decided to be professional, but they didn't have the money. People want to, don't want to come to play here, and Quebec was losing players like um, for the rent through uh, millionaires. We, everybody's talking about the Patricks and use alone, but we had two players there. Uh, a Yogan, a replacement, and uh, Jordan, or Herb Jordan. Uh, he, he stayed an amateur at these, at these uh, even if you play for rent through, but he asked the Orion to be a worker for them, so that's why he stayed amateur and worked for the company for the rest of his life. And Patty Moran signed for Montreal. The only time this goal was leave uh, Quebec, he signed for the Montreal, I don't remember the name, in the CHA. The All Stars. That's all Montreal. All Montreal, yeah, thanks. Thank you. So, um, in fact, when the NHA and the CHA merged in 1910, there were 10 teams, five in Montreal, they merged. Quebec was left over. So, for the first time in all those years, Quebec was left over, and it was like, really a resentment in Quebec to say, oh yeah, that, that's professional hockey. We told you we should not never go this, that far because they don't want Quebec anymore and now we have the proof. Yes? Isn't that Cyclone there? Yep. Cyclone, they got a great team. Lester Patrick, New Zealand Cyclone end. Taylor, there's a lot of them. Um, okay, so, sorry. Okay. But in fact, when we look back at this, uh, um, no hockey in Quebec in 1910, the first year of the NHA, it was a good thing. Because Waterloo, in the OPHL, I think, yeah. okay, um, the Colts, needed players badly. And since Quebec was quitting, or they were not playing, they called six players to play for them, and three chosen to go. Rocket Power, at the end there, Jack McDonald, also from Quebec City, and Joe Malone. He did start playing for the Quebec hockey team in that time, but he was still young. I think he was 20 years old at that, that time. And, uh, well, he was 19 years old for photo. And uh, it was a good thing because the year after, oh, sorry, <laughs> uh, they finally get to the NHA uh, for the first season in this league in 1910, 1911. And they got to sign uh, for the first time because they had a, a new ownership uh, with a lot of French Canadian. Senator Chaquette, who was there, had a lot of money. And they managed to sign their first player from the outside. Everybody was hiring players from everywhere except Quebec, but now they could get the one here. Eddie Hoffman, an Ontarian, signed. He was playing with Joe, it was great, so he signed with the Quebec Bulldogs. And they did manage to sign Joel. That was the bad Joel, but nobody wanted them. And Quebec did, and he get the greatest year maybe with Quebec. Also, Tommy Dunderdale was at the Hall of Fame. So the first season in the NHA was not good, but they had some good players. For the best season ever of the Quebec team, it's 1911, 1912, everything's great in Quebec. Newspapers are talking about the team. They had the new weekly uh, uh, tabloid, Living Mans Sportif. It was uh, about Island uh, Every week they talk about the hockey club. It was really special for Quebec. Hockey was uh, playing six men for the first time, and they had their new jersey that I wearing here. <laughs> so uh, with the good players, good Gordy Brothers, Goldy Brothers was coming in. So. Uh, they expect a lot. They lost the first three games, but then it started to move on. They named Joe Malone as the captain, and the season was incredible. Like, only 14, the Wanderers, Canadian, uh, Ottawa, and Quebec, they are all tied up. It's really close. Like, everybody has uh, uh, the, the same score at, with four games to go, the same schedule. And in Quebec, it's incredible. Like I told you, uh, everybody was talking about It's like those days when uh, they sell a button of the Quebec Hockey Club and go after the game, get some uh, ice cream. It's, it's really special in Quebec City. 
So the team is good, and uh, they are proud of their players. And they win the most important game of their career, of their history, in Ottawa. Uh, at the end of the third period, uh, if Ottawa wins, and Joe Malone scored uh, with the six seconds to go, so they go into overtime, and after 23 minutes, Joe all scored a goal, and uh, they won the game. So when they came back at the uh, uh, the Hotel Victoria after the game uh, uh, from Ottawa, 5,000 to 10,000 people uh, cheered for them. Uh, and they didn't even want the Stanley Cup because they wanted three days after when Ottawa lost to Wanderers of Montreal, they were at the Hotel Victoria <laughs> listening to the game, but uh, not listening, but reading the, 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 the tickers. Ticker takes and the one who won, so they won the Stanley Cup at the hotel, maybe the first time ever. <laughs> they played Mountain for the Stanley Cup, to defend Stanley Cup, and they won 9-3 and 8-0. Jack, Jack McDonald had uh, nine goals in those two games, and uh, everybody was happy, French or English, everybody was talking about the Quebec Bulldogs. It was the best year. So these are the champions. And it's funny to see the numbers. That was on the shirts for the first season ever. And what I always find funny is that the numbers are exactly the position of the players. So that's why the goaltender is number one, because it was one, two for defenseman, three for the other defenseman, another weird fit. And then four, Joe Malone, the center, five. Five is there, Jack Malone, six, Eddie Altman, seven, it was a spare. So. That's why the numbers are usually uh, for the center man four and both number one, etc. Et um, then the PCHA said, okay, that's enough. We want to have all the players from Quebec City. And they tried. And this is interesting because it's uh, from the Jomanon's vault in uh, London, in Ontario. Uh, the, his son, who is 90 years old now, uh, kept everything for him. And uh, this is a, a telegram from Frank Patrick. Addressed to John Malone in November 1912, asking, well, NHA has broken faith with us. Will you accept a proposition for Ottman and Rogers? Also willing to give Moran McDonald Hall $1,800 and transportation and both immediately. He wanted all the players, the starting players of the Quebec, to broke the NHA. They said, if yeah, the, the, the Stanley Cup holders are not good, it, it won't be a good league, so we'll get all those players. And three of them choose to move on. So they lost um, Jack McDonald from Quebec City. They lost also Goldie Rogers and Eddie Altman for $2,500 each. Um, only McDonald had $2,000. So the only one who stayed are Moran, the goaltender, um, Joe Hall, who's from Manitoba, I could have been, but he loved Quebec, and also John Hall. Then they built like a new team, because they had to find three other players, like half a team, to start it, and they were lucky. They did get some great players, like Rusty Crawford, who was in the Hall of Fame, Harry Munry, the big defenseman, and Tommy Smith, who was playing for Moncton the year before. He's a great goal, goal scorer, so they had Another good team, and they won 16 games out of 20, so they won another Stanley Cup, beating Sydney in 1913, Quebec City. And this is that year that we finally found why they are called Bulldogs. If you read Michel Vigneault, Donald Gay, and other historians, they tell that they are called Bulldogs since the beginning. And I worked really, really hard for finding the truth about this, and the it wasn't possible. The first time I ever saw the word Bulldogs was in the Ottawa Citizen of Fe February 10th, 1930. And you were talking about the uh, Joe Hall's Bulldog. So it was the first time it was uh, reprinted in Quebec a week later and then two weeks later and the year after Bulldogs was the nickname official of the team. But it was never the official name of the team. Um, so this is uh, the, the Bulldog. It, it was not there last year, now it's there for the Stanley Cup, and it is Joe Al's that Joe, Joe Al is has uh, uh, the, the string on, 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 on the other picture we saw him, and uh, the Bulldog is there. It's his dog. 
So they have a new area at, at last. It was far out of the, the city. And this photo is not in the book because it was sent to me like a few months ago. And I'm really proud to at last see the arena. It was taken about in 1939. Uh, the stadium was built in 1938, and the arena uh, burned down in 1942. So that's the arena that played the Quebec Bulldogs in the NHL. Um, it was about 6,000 people sitting there, and it, it didn't have uh, artificial lights. At the, uh, now, yes, but not before. It was not a great arena. <laughs> So I'll go fast because I don't know how much time I have, but uh, the, the, the situation goes on, it goes on with the NHA, and the Canadians are getting the most of the French Canadian uh, amateur of hockey in Quebec City. When the Canadians play, they double the, uh, the uh, people in the arena. They are really popular, so Quebec Bulldogs has some difficulties because they don't have any French Canadian players. That's a real problem, I explained it. The other team that's just really popular in Quebec City is the Sun of Ireland. All Quebec-born players. There's uh, Melon there, the brother of Joe. There's also McDonald's, the captain, and uh, also um, the uh, team manager. For those who want to see for the first time, maybe Frank Brophy, the NHL goaler for the, the 1920 uh, Quebec Bulldogs. Uh, he was there with the Sons of Ireland. He was really young, young at, at this stage. So Quebec was not behind the hockey team. It was World War One. It was hard. The Sons were popular. So for the first year in the NHL, Quebec decided not to go. But the plan of Mike Quinn, the famous uh, uh, manager of the team, was: we won't go this year. I will rent my players to the other teams, and I will be able to pay my debt. Uh, we see debt in, uh, in English? Why? Debt. Okay. So, um, and he, it was a brilliant, brilliant plan because he wouldn't have had a team anyway. Paddy Moran was retiring, and Joe Ballon and Jack McDonald were living in Montreal. They, would, they weren't going to play for Quebec next year. So uh, he said, I won't quit. I will just say I'll loan my my, my player for the year, and it worked. So uh, the year after, um, Emmett Quinn bought the team, and he planned to uh, bring the team to Toronto in 1918, 1919. Uh, but his plan was to start a new league with Edil Livingstone, and to keep the players from Quebec to build at least two teams, and all the players that Quebec won. So it didn't work, so uh, the, the team was left uh, uh, again for the second year. So they played only one year in the NHL, and it's really interesting, and it's uh, about uh, the end of the presentation. Uh, the league said, we want to play four teams next year. Can you uh, bring back those guys for Quebec for an, an, another year? So Quinn says yes, and I have some other players to add to Malone and everybody, and I think I'm going to have a good team. So they um, rented, not rented, but uh, they loan the fr a franchise. They, Quebec didn't earn a franchise in uh, the NHL, never. It was the NHL who let Quebec play in their league for one year, and the logo, they, there is no logo in, on the shirt. And they just changed the name to avoid problem with Livingstone and Emmett Quinn, so it was the Quebec Athletic Club. So that's why you see a Quebec Athletic in a Quebec Hockey Club. And they had a really nightmare season, four victories, 20 losses. All the players were older than before, and some didn't come. And the French guy that Quinn was trying to get to bring the French people to see the games didn't come. They asked for Aurel Joliet, he said no. They asked for Joe Matt, he said no. Uh, four uh, French Canadians from Ottawa or elsewhere said no, and they eventually did great things in the NHL. If it should have worked, maybe, if Aurélie was saying to Quebec, I'll go, maybe Quebec will have lost a, a, a little more. But they did have one record that is still holding on, the seven goals of Joe Malone in a January 1920 game against Toronto in Quebec City. So Joe Malone Cook scored seven goals that night, and this record holds 50,000 games later. So this is a souvenir. The team was 
transferred to Hamilton the year after uh, because Livingstone, and we, we talked about it just before, uh, wanted it to own the Hamilton uh, ice to uh, have a franchise of this new league, and the league said no. We won't let this go to so Quebec. We go to Hamilton and Livingstone. Go to Quebec if you want. And even Livingstone will go to Quebec because nobody wants to go to Quebec alone. It's, it's hard. So people in Quebec are really angry about the NHL. And uh, John Malone was the team captain of the Hamilton Tigers. So what's left? Well, my book and some souvenirs. I had a chance to. Um, uh, see some old trophies because people like the uh, doctor uh, told me uh, uh, contacted me. I have an old trophy with the names of the hockey players on it. 1906, that was great. The daughter of Walter Rooney, who played also for McWill, still lives, and she sold me this old picture of uh, the team she had for all these years. And of course, Joe Malone with Rita, Brian, his son. Uh, at the, the hockey game for the book that was uh, held in 1912, uh, 2012, <laughs> November uh, the 11th. So uh, Jacques Demers is there. Cape, Cape, uh, the Screaming Eagles are there. And it's funny because Cape Breton, it was Sydney before, and Sydney played the Stanley Cup in 1930, so 100 years later against the, the, the Ramparts. Joe Malone Jr. and me. But my blue shirt is uh, not well positioned for the photo. <laughs> <laughs> so that's about it. So you have the book. Okay, thank you very much for uh, listening to me. And I hope it wasn't too hard. If you have some questions, feel free. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thanks. Uh, it's a strange question in here. It's probably not going to be able to answer it. But uh, one of the early photos from 18, je ne sais pas quoi, Arthur, Edward, the guy who yeah. told me medals. Uh, Albert, the, uh, yeah. They're all wearing medals. Oh, yeah. Which strikes me as uncommon. Is that one of those participation medals from the festival? Or it, the, it was about the carnival. It was a carnival. Yeah, they, they won the game and the carnival in 18, um, uh, 1994. And they gave medals to the winner. <coughs> And uh, that's why they have medals. Why, why do you have two? I, I, I don't know. But this one is the medal they gave at the carnival. The they Montreal? beat Montreal. Now, the Quebec beat Montreal. Who had the, the Stanley Cup, the M3A, 3-2 uh, on this night. That's it. Yes. I have a question. Might not be able to answer either. If you flip through a few pictures, it's just a little past the Renfrew team picture. Okay. There was a cartoon, basically, like a newspaper <laughs> drawing. That one. Now, back. Now, Patty Moran is, I mean, it's obviously kind of a baseball spoof, but clearly wearing a catcher's mask. I know, it's funny, eh? Did you? Because, I mean, I've seen stories like as back as 1904 that, that, that yeah, maybe there's was a mask here. A catcher's mask yeah. in practice with the Marlies. Did he wear it? Do you know? No, I, 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 I never read something that he wore it. Maybe, maybe because he was acting like a catcher, he was jumping everywhere, he had a special character. I could have done a book on him alone. <laughs> he was spinning on players who come from the nearest crease. <laughs> and in the ice, so that's the, that's the kind of goaltender he was. <laughs> so I guess Malone didn't carry a gun. But, but Malone didn't carry a gun, and uh, Joe Hall didn't carry an axe. <laughs> yes? Wearing the mask in that picture too. <laughs> that sideways one. Uh, yeah. Well, well, it's a, a suggestion to Barry Moran. Ah, sure. Ah, he, he was crazy. Know. He was really crazy. <laughs> He's at the Yellow uh, Fame also. Yes. On the original Stanley Cup, uh, there's engraved a little little bit that says Bow Wow. We often thought it was the mascot of the Quebec team. Do you know if the mascot's name was Bow Wow? No. And I asked the guy who was the, 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 the white hair from the, the Sunday Cup, and he says it's not true. Ah, okay. But, but I, I read this about the Bow Wow, and in fact, I found a picture of the team, a reverse picture of, of every player, and he said Togo. Oh. T O G O. So that might be the name of the, 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 the dog, but I, I read the Bow Wow thing, and he, he told me not. It's not true. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Ron? Joe Malone's nickname. Oh, they had Phantom? Phantom. And I think there's another one, that's probably But the fa Phantom, it was, it was given to him in New York. It was a claim. He scored five goals, when, and it was at the spring. And nobody saw the players on the ice because there was too much fog. 
And then Joe came along and scored a goal. But then Joe Malone, so that's why it, the phantom, it's always like that in the article. So I think it was that night. Thank you. Well, thank you very much.